There's a part I really, really like in the 50th law where 50 Cent writes, because the greatest fear people have is that of being themselves. They do what everyone else does, even if it doesn't fit where and who they are. But you get not nowhere that way. Your energy is weak and no one pays attention to you. You're running away from the one thing that you own, what makes you different. Once I felt the power I had by showing the world I didn't care about being like other people, I could never go back. And this echoes uh, something you previously wrote when you wrote, the world wants to assign you a role in life. And once you accept that role, you are doomed. So there's a really interesting dynamic there. It's almost like to be recognized and appreciated by others even, right? You have to kind of be yourself. You can't just play to the role uh, or the expectations that others have of you or care too much what they think of you. On the other hand, much of what you write about on tactics and strategy has to do with anticipating other people's actions and adapting and responding accordingly. So how, how do you feel that we should strike that balance, right? Between sort of being unapologetically and fearlessly and spontaneously ourselves, but also anticipating people's reactions and being smart and tactical in the world. Um, so, you know, like everything in life, it's about context. It's not a black and white thing where you just must always be yourself. You know, you enter the work world, you're 22, you're 23, you're in a, in a company with 10, 100,000 people. And if you just be yourself, if you just wear the clothes that you want to wear, if you just act and do it, you're going to be fired in, 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 in a couple of days, right? It won't work. Yes, guilty as charged. Okay. It's right. <laughs> well, we've all been there on that. So, you know, you have to understand where you are, your circumstances in life, and what the game is at that particular moment, right? So I have the law of court attention at all costs, right? But that depends on where you are and what field you're in, right? If you're entering, working at Microsoft, that's your first job and you're courting attention at all costs, it won't work. And that's why I make everything in the 48 Laws, I make it very clear about the context of, of where you are in your particular status and, and moment in life and what is appropriate, what is not. And it's also why I have the reversals for each chapter where I'm saying, Here's an instance where courting attention at all costs will be deadly for you. You shouldn't do it, right? right? So yeah. the game of power, the game of life, being a great strategist is being able to let go of things from the past and be alive to the moment, to the circumstance. What is law number 48? Assume formlessness. It's the last law because it's the most important law. Being able to kind of flow with the moment and adapt to your circumstances. Okay, so... You mentioned the game and the difficulty of it, and it is a bit of an art where in your work, in, in, in what you do, you create something that is unique, right? When you get to that position where you can do that, right? So if you're able now to, to make the film or write the music or write the book or start the business and you have money and backing and a bit of experience, then by all means, try and be as different as possible right? Because that's mm -hmm. the road to power. But if you're not there yet, bide your time and wait and see what things are, are, are more in your, going in your direction. You can afford to take risks, right? Because fortune favors the bold, as they say. And I, I'm greatly in favor of taking risks, not gambling. There's a difference between risk and gamble. A risk is if you lose, your life isn't destroyed. You're not like devastated. You haven't put all of your money on on a blackjack on on one set of cards that you wiped out. You can land back on your feet. A gamble is if you lose, you're in you're in deep doo doo, right? You're in trouble, right? So risks are something that are very important for you to take at the appropriate moment. So that's in your work if you can afford it, and then maybe in your image, if that's who you. If you're an artist, you can afford to be different and unique. But at the same time, when you're dealing with people in the social sense, that's where the game shifts. And that's where you have to be able to kind of move between the two, where you have different parts of your brain that you can access, where you're not just one, you know, not this train headed in one direction. I'm going to be different no matter what anybody any says, or you're going to offend a lot of people, unless you're in a position where offending people is part of your reputation. But that, that, that won't work very well even for a comedian. So 
you, you can't just be going, I'm going to do this one thing. That's my source of power. The game being social and polite and being a courtier and pleasing people means you have to have a fine sensitivity to how other people think, right? So yeah. go to, back to 50. He's somebody who understood very early on that his source of power is his being different. You had in the, in the world of hip hop and then you had everybody trying to pretend that they were a gangster, right? You know, and even Ja Rule, which you, with whom he had his famous beef with, you know, and they were, you did you call them fake gangsters because mm -hmm. they came, they didn't come from wealth, but they came from decent backgrounds. Whereas 50 was a real gangster. He was shot nine times because of a, a failed drug deal, right? He mm -hmm. had the wounds. He had the bullets still lodged in his mouth. All right, I'm going to play that up. I'm going to be as different as possible and use that image. But at the same time, I have to be very pleasing to the uh, industry people, the record label at Interscope. You know, I have to be very polite and understand their mentality and how to fit in to the world of Interscope to the various different levels. Um, I forget the name of the C, is it Jimmy something or other? Jimmy IOB, dude. Jimmy IOB, who was a master yeah. player of power, a very difficult man, how you deal with him and his ego. So you can do both at the same time. You can walk and chew gum at the same time. You'd be surprised <laughs> that you have that ability to be authentic, to let yourself out when it's appropriate in your work, in your music, in your business. But in other moments, you are deeply sensitive to people's feelings, to their mood, to their spirit. You can enter their spirit. So if you could play that two-pronged game, if you could walk and shoot gum at the same time, the doors are open to you. And that is, mm -hmm. when it's appropriate, be yourself, let go, you know, create an image of something that's not like anybody else. And at the same time, be deeply empathetic to the people around you and understand their needs and their weaknesses mm -hmm. and how you can seduce them.